I've wasted a lot of time going over things in a loop without really gaining any new information that helps me make a decision. I think it's from my childhood, you know, the person I was growing up. I look back on my time at Cambridge, which was really stressful. You start a career like being a, about being a doctor, it, you kind of feel, I must, I must complete this, I must stay on this path. Being addicted to that stress environment internally, which becomes so normal to you that it's all you know. Hello, my fellow leaders. Greetings from sunny Brazil. Welcome back to Anatomy of a Leader with me, Maria Vorostovsky. This summer, I decided to do a little experiment of short clips from past conversations that really resonated with me. I really hope you enjoy them. This week, I'm revisiting my conversation with a renowned British dermatologist, YouTuber and entrepreneur, Dr. Sam Bunting. With her extensive social media presence, her namesake YouTube channel and TV appearances, Dr. Sam helps to debunk common skincare myths. She even created her own brand, Dr. Sam's, to make effective skincare accessible to all. In this short clip, Dr. Sam talks about her competitive and hardworking personality, dealing with anxiety, and how it impacted her success. If you're forever tangled in a web of overthinking and want to break the pattern, or if you just want to know yourself a little better, then this episode is for you. Please make sure to follow or subscribe to the show wherever you're listening. I kick off by asking Dr. Sam what one habit she would like to break. What one habit would you like to break? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I'm an overthinker and then I would tend to, I guess, withdraw a bit when I get, you know, particularly kind of bogged down in something. But at touch wood, it doesn't happen now to the same extent. I do think I've broken my tendency to ruminate endlessly and I have a, a good number of people I can call up to help me if I'm not, if my own practices aren't... Um, breaking the habit but I've wasted a lot of time going over things in a loop without really gaining any new information that helps me make a decision I think sometimes I just you know need to do that thing of like imagine the advice I'd give to a best friend who was going through the same thing but um yeah but yeah I'm, I'm definitely working on that but that mm. has been my biggest struggling where point. do you think that comes from um I think I think it's my personality you know, I think it's from my childhood, you know, the person I was growing up, um, I, you know, I worked really hard. I was, was trying to be top of my class. I was good at sport. Um, I enjoyed, I think, making other people happy with my achievements. I think probably I got rewarded for that as a child, not in a, in a bad way, but I think that's, I'm naturally competitive, but then it also had positive benefits in the people around me. So I think doing well by my own standards is really important for me mm, and I can, they're quite high <laughs> yeah I mean I, I can definitely relate to that because mm. yeah I can definitely <laughs> relate to that I'm very prone to these kind of like getting stuck on a loop and going yeah. down this sort of negative vortex which is doesn't have any no it doesn't any influence the outcome <laughs> and having just like completely like these irrational thoughts and the other day and I don't know where it came to me I think I probably saw something on Instagram where it's like well you those negative thoughts you know like you, you know you're thinking about all these terrible things that can happen to you you know you could just as well be thinking you're the most amazing person in in the world and it's like why you've almost choose choosing the thoughts I don't necessarily believe we choose that but being aware of it does help to um um to, to work on that but I was like whenever I'm going to have a really weird irrational thought or just kind of being stuck on the loop I'm just going to think of a million pounds falling from the sky into my lap as a way to just basically break a loop the pattern. I was like, oh, if yeah. I'm going to be thinking about something that may be implausible, why not think about something that's, you know, at least have a positive tint to it? I think you can choose your thoughts. I think it's just, it's, you need to have that moment of self-awareness where you step outside of the patterns because it is just about fall, falling into patterns and they're etched in this is the whole you know it's neuroplasticity you know neurons that wire together fire together it's it's all of that stuff if you've been doing that since childhood mm -hmm. it takes a hell of a lot of energy and persistence to unwire and to think of the loops in a positive way as you just said to sort of re-implant the new the new ideas um but i think it it is doable. Um, I think it's just difficult sometimes to measure your progress, right? Because you, all you see is your own thoughts and your. But I think you have to look at the way things happen around you. Then, as evidence that perhaps you are changing, you are improving. 
um, I'm definitely happier as a person despite having ever more things to do and be responsible for than I was two years ago and I think that is a product of meditation and just learning to detach a bit better Mm -hmm. not clinging on to those worrying (laughs) patterns and kind of almost being addicted to that stress environment internally which becomes so normal to you that it's all you know and that you Mm. literally start creating it from the minute you wake up um, by by the quality of your thoughts but if you can get a hold of those thoughts change the thoughts you bathe your brain in is a good start hence as say thinking about other people's kind of positive stories and you know at one point I was listening to the Steve Jobs commencement speech have you, have you seen yes, that video yes. it's amazing yeah and you know I, it's it's a bit cheesy and maybe it sounds contrived you're sort of it's this concept of synthetic happiness but at at the end of the day, if you practice it enough, it's what you become. Mm. They become your traits. They don't, they're not just habits or pastimes. I think in the beginning, especially when you're going from one extreme to the other, it feels like a bit forced. Yeah. And it is, but that's what you need to do to break that pattern. Right. And if you're doing that on a consistent basis, then you're beginning to not only break the pattern, but to create a new one. Yes. And that's the point of it. So and it I, becomes automatic after yeah. a period of time. So you're not having to sort of autocorrect mm. it you just are that's that's the goal anyway yes no exactly <laughs> i'll come back to you another couple of years and see how i'm doing yes absolutely <laughs> i was like let's just review in the next um yeah. yeah two years what advice would you give your younger self what three pieces of advice oh i get quite emotional even just thinking about that just to be kinder to myself yeah i was i've, I've always been so harsh on myself and I think you know probably to some extent then holding myself to high standards mean I hold other people and perhaps sometimes I can you know maybe be too tough in terms of my expectations of other people but I think yeah just be kind and enjoy it like I look back on my time at Cambridge which was really stressful um medicine at Cambridge was really tough and I just wish I'd relaxed and enjoyed it more. I went back for a matriculation kind of reunion a a few months ago. And I I don't know, I saw Cambridge through very different eyes. It was very small and it somehow felt an awful lot smaller than it did at the time. Um, But it's so beautiful and it was such a privilege to study there. But I think I spent the whole time in a state of worry about exams and what people thought about me. I just wish I'd been able to, you know, relax and smell the flowers, as they say. Yeah. I wonder, though, because a lot of people say that they, you know, be kinder to yourself or, you know, just relax, you know, don't worry so much. Uh, It's going to work out. But not to dismiss how you were feeling at the time, because this is probably the advice I would give myself also to just not take things so seriously and to be kinder to myself. But part of that grounding in the work that you're doing also gets you to where you are now in terms of, you know, level of success or you know getting a degree from Cambridge and yeah I just think that's also part of you and accepting that part also Mm. is is something that I probably would say to myself I think I think you can be uh, an achiever without having to have this tight grip on things though I I think you can I think you maybe even are better for it because you think more expansively you know having this kind of low level fight or flight response all the time really narrows your perspective maybe maybe I wouldn't have studied medicine I'm not saying I regret that in any way but you know you kind of you start a career like being about being a doctor you kind of feel I must I must complete this I must stay on this path and in a way, when you start working as a doctor, you aren't in fight or flight all the time because it's, it's a really scary business when you, start, when you start out and then you push yourself and you get through all these exams. I don't know. If I'd been more curious and open to using my intelligence in a broader way, given what I've now discovered about myself and my capabilities, maybe my path would have been different. So it's not that I look back on, any, on it regretfully, but if I could have harnessed my drive and ambition not from that place of mm. wanting to be good enough and more into that let's let's see how crazy things can get you know mm-hmm. it, it might have been very different so I think that's that's what I would say to younger people is is to kind of exams are of course super important and, and becoming accomplished but it's real life experience that really matters and it's becoming knowledgeable about yourself that matters again I think we should teach things about mindfulness to young people we should teach them how to manage their emotions we should teach them 
to, to know themselves, um, or at least to, to have the skills to start discovering that about themselves from an earlier age. It would make such a difference to people's satisfaction and happiness. That was Dr. Sam Bunting, YouTuber, dermatologist and founder of Dr. Sam Skincare. I've been your host, Maria Vorostovsky, and I hope you've enjoyed the short clip. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe or follow button wherever you're listening, and I'll see you next week.